Good morning and welcome to St. Philip Lutheran. I'm wearing the mask today because when we do gather, and that will be coming soon, we'd like you to wear your masks as you come into the sanctuary. Welcome to worship at St. Philip Lutheran Church Glenview on the 28th of June, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. I'm Paul Kopka, the interim pastor here at St. Philip, and this is the worship service online for June 28th. We welcome one and all. During this worldwide crisis, congregations throughout this church are not able to gather to worship as the body of Christ. And while we can't be together in person, we certainly can hear the word of God and hold each other up in prayer. Today's confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever and whose faithfulness is from generation to generation. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust in your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Our gathering song. Awake, O sleeper, rise from death, and Christ shall give depth and height to us on earth he came to bring from sin and fear release to give the spirit's unity the very bond of peace there is one body and one hope one spirit and one call one lord one faith and one one God who made us all. Then walk in love as Christ has loved, who died that he might save. With kind and gentle hearts forgive, as God in Christ forgave. For us Christ lived, for us he died, and conquered in the strife. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. For 
peace in our homes, for friends and family, for life and for love, for our work and our play. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. For your spirit to guide that you center our lives in the water our souls with your body and blood. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. Let us pray. O oh God, you direct our lives by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from the Old Testament, from God's prophet Jeremiah. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. Word of, of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament reading is from Paul's letter to the believers in Rome. Therefore, do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you now are ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. 
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew in the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, grace and peace to you this day from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. It's been quite warm and dry. Okay, hot. So hot and dry that much of our lawn has become parched. Frankly, much more brown than green. Even with a couple of drenching rainfalls in the past week, it's still that way. I think that when those soaking sheets of rain come down, there should be an immediate restoration of my lawn. When rain comes on a dry lawn, my thought is that everything, absolutely everything, should be lush and green for the whole remainder of the season. But that doesn't happen that way. Of course, there's some things that need to be done. Like pulling weeds and watering and maybe even fertilizing in the days ahead. So there's an initial word of rain, and then there's things to do. The very last book of the Old Testament is the book of the prophet Malachi, and he says, See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before you, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. Indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts, for he is like refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord. So the prophet has an initial message, and then there's things to do. Last Friday, many were overjoyed to hear Governor Pritzker move the whole state of Illinois into phase four of COVID response. Hooray! And that means we can gather in larger numbers. I heard one person exclaim, enjoy. Now I can go back to my favorite restaurant and be inside and eat there. An initial message and then things to do. And now you know that there still are things to do in Illinois, like wearing masks and practicing social distance. The virus is going to be around for a long, long time, so we need to be concerned for those most at risk among us. Now, I know soon and very soon the time will come to reopen the church building for worship. And when that time comes, there'll still be things to do, some differences to make so that all might be protected. Now, please, my friends, don't get carried away. There are still things to repair and clean up, before more than this four-person production crew can be in the church building together, yet the day will come. And keep watching St. Philip website for more details. Watch for the news, and then there will be things to do. An initial message, and then things to do. Like today, Later this morning at 11 a.m., a very special congregation meeting will be held on Zoom, followed by in-person ballot voting in the church parking lot, starting at 12.30 p.m. The initial message is the congregational meeting. And I know several of you have been practicing this all last week on Zoom. And those without internet video can take part by calling that special phone number and using a code. So the initial message is training, 
taking part in that meeting, and then registering to vote. So to be clear, active members, those who've been most recently confirmed all the way through the most seasoned regular member can be registered. And then later in the day, there'll be more to do. That will be driving to the church parking lot, receiving a ballot, voting, and dropping it off from your car to a teller. So there's an initial message and then things to do. In our first lesson this day, the prophet Jeremiah politely listened to another prophet whose name was Hananiah, who urged taking the path of least resistance. Take the path of least resistance, he said, while this conquering empire is coming through. What happened, the context was that the armies of Babylon had just invaded, they just plundered the temple and they taken captives as they marched through tiny Israel. Hananiah, the other prophet, was full of the news, the kind of news that even today we love to hear from our leaders. Everything's going to be fine. You're doing just great. Just forget about the tragedies of having been invaded. Ignore that the temple's been robbed and ransacked. And forget about that some of your fellow citizens have been kidnapped. Everything's going to be fine. All will be well. Fortunately, Jeremiah was not fooled. He said, hold it. Since ancient days, prophets have pretty much only spoken of bad times. The big three, war, famine, and pestilence. Sure, one or two prophets spoke about salvation and freedom, but the overwhelming number of Jewish prophets spoke that ancient troika, war, famine, and pestilence. If you want to know if a prophet is speaking the truth, simply, if that word the prophet speaks comes true, if it comes to be, then you'll know it's a true prophet. And besides that, false prophets usually only preach good fortune. To double check who's a false prophet, the Bible says if they preach nothing but peace, 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 when there is no peace, that's probably a false prophet. It's a sin against God to prophesy falsely. Those prophets come to a quick end. So it's no wonder that we do not hear anything else about Hananiah after this chapter in Isaiah. You might be asking by now, what in the world does this word of the Lord have to do with us today? Put most simply, there's an initial message and then things to do. Today, this Sunday, after a several month sojourn with the pandemic, God has good news. That is, that a candidate to be the next resident pastor of St. Philip will be presented to the congregation today at the meeting. Hooray! And a safe process for being eligible for voting along with drive-through voting will occur. And so you members of St. Philip today will be motor voters. Now please, Hear me, even though we're in stage four now of pandemic living, no one, not myself, not anybody else, has prophesied when the pandemic will come to an end. So the word of the Lord, first an initial message, then thanks to do. And I want to be sure you hear this. Clearly, no pastor, whether they're a resident pastor or even an intern pastor, is able to save you from the pandemic or save the world or even save a church. Only Jesus can give you that kind of reward. Only Jesus can remake you into those who serve the little ones. Only Jesus can be signs of God's own merciful welcome. Only Jesus 
can help us welcome others, the sick, the downtrodden, the tired, the forgotten, those who live as second-class citizens in this country, and those for who choose to love others the way they want to are cast and are cast out because of those choices. Do you know right now, God is remaking you, making you free to welcome those whom you previously may not have welcomed. And all this making welcome does not come out of the goodness and pureness of our own hearts, but only out of that welcoming love that Jesus has for you. And that why you were still sinners. He died for you. The ancient prophets, they spoke war, famine, and pestilence in their message. And this word is still around us even today. We might wish to listen to people who speak of peace instead of pestilence. We might long to say amen to their big promises. But I say to you, false comfort is worse than no comfort at all. Instead, in hard times, we who have been baptized into Christ should offer welcome to people and speak the truth. We should offer comfort, a, a, a cup of cold water, to the least and the littlest ones, the ones hurt in these times. For truth speakers are the true emissaries of God, and the little ones, the vulnerable and the unjustly treated are the very presence of Jesus to you. And so the truth in Christ saves us, turning our bodies from, a, from sin to real righteousness, from death to real life, from despair to real hope, from lies to real love. And that's good news. Good news for all who are longing to be free of what enslaves you. Good news, like water on dry grass, like forgiveness of sins, like life, like real life. Real life, in Jesus' name, amen. Let us build a house where love can dwell And all can safely live A place where saints and children tell And hearts learn to forgive Built of hopes and dreams and visions Rock of faith and vault of grace Here the love of Christ shall end division All our well where prophets speak and words are strong and true where all God's children dare to seek and dream God's reign anew where the cross is and as witness and a symbol of God's grace here is one we claim the faith of Jesus all a welcome where love is found in water, wine, and wheat. A banquet hall on holy ground where peace and justice meet. Here the love of God through Jesus is revealed in time and space. As we share in Christ the feast that frees us all our Let 
us build a house where hands will reach beyond the wood and stone to heal and strengthen, serve and teach and live the word they've known. Hear the outcast and the stranger bear the image of God's face. Let us bring an end to fear and danger. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where all are named, their songs and visions heard, and loved and treasured, taught and claimed as words within of tears and cries and laughter, prayers of faith and songs of grace. Let this house proclaim from floor to rafter, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. With Christians around the world, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So although we're distant from each other, we're called to join together and pray for our needy world. And in response to each petition, you're invited to offer your own prayer silently or aloud and to conclude each petition with the words, your mercy is great. Let us pray for the Church of Jesus Christ around the world. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Let us pray for our congregation and for its leadership and for today's very special congregational meeting. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Let us pray for the health of the world, its lands, its seas, its animals, its people. Hear us, O God, our light and our shield. Your mercy is great. Let us pray for those who work in our fields and produce our food. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Let us pray for peace between and within nations, especially during these days of protest. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Let us pray for President Trump, the Congress, and the Supreme Court. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Let us pray for a right observance of the 4th of July. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Let us pray for all who are oppressed, enslaved, or poverty-stricken. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Let us pray for an end to racism. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Let us pray both 
for protesters and police. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Let us pray for all who are sick or sorrowing from the coronavirus. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Let us pray for medical workers and researchers. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Let us pray for families facing an uncertain and unprecedented summertime. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Let us give thanks to God for Bishop Irenaeus, the Apostles Peter, Paul, and Thomas, and all those who have died in the faith. And let us also pray that at our end we may join them in God's presence. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. O God, the Holy One, you are yourself the cup of cold water we crave, relieving our deep thirst. Receive these prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, for your mercy is great, now and forever. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you, and also with you. If you are gathered with somebody in your home watching, you may exchange the peace of the Lord. If not, just exchange it verbally with someone who may be on the other side of the screen. And now we come to the time of offering. We thank you for your continued donations to the ministry of St. Philip Lutheran Church. If you would like to make a donation, we thank you. And they may be dropped off physically at the church in the mailbox or mailed to the church at the street address. Again, we thank you for your support during this unusual time. Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that they might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through, the, through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And remember us in your kingdom, O Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen. Give to our God in immortal praise, mercy and truth are all his ways, wonders of grace to Sun.
we have these few announcements this morning. You know, it's so beautiful. This is a day to see and rejoice in the goodness of God. And so after the service, Zoom fellowship starts about 945. And then remember that the Zoom special congregation meeting will be at 11 o'clock. And that meeting is important. You need to uh, connect to this meeting so that you will be registered to vote starting at 1230 in the church parking lot. And, and this week, meetings will include a special council meeting Tuesday evening, Wednesday daytime Bible studies. May you have a safe and blessed 4th of July. And may the Lord be with you.